Hello everyone and welcome back to some Python programming tutorials. We're still looking at SimPy, I'm Root of the Null, and now we're going to move into some actual cool mathematics and programming stuff. Today we're going to be looking at symbols, which is essentially the core of symbolic computation and now SimPy programming and cool stuff we're looking at. So this is really the baseline, the foundation for all of these coming tutorials. So here we are in our Python interpreter. We got idle fired up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import everything from our SimPy module. Normally I had been doing this by import SimPy, but I want to have all of the functions and kind of variables in our scope. So without having to have to type SimPy in front of them all over and over and over again. So the way that I do this is from SimPy import all. Cool. There we go. Now, if we're using symbols, symbols are our variables, like, you know, X and Y and mathematics and other cool stuff if we get into Z and Z or whatever. So that's what we need to be looking at. Let's say we wanted a variable X, and we just had this expression, X plus 1. That's, that's pretty normal in mathematics, right? Well, in Python, always a variable needs a value. If we're trying to use x kind of like a mathematical symbol, like a mathematical variable, Python's not going to know what we're doing. So we have to declare it as a symbol. Py Python's variables are typically going to hold the place of a SymPy symbol. You have to define them this way. Now the way that we do this with SymPy is with a function called symbols. And you pass into it here the names as a string. So we'll pass in the string x, and we'll set this equal to the x variable in Python. And that's the way that we kind of declare that we're going to be using a symbol. If we run this, we just hit the enter button. It doesn't return anything for us because we just set it to a variable, but now it works pretty nicely. If I tried x plus 1 now, we get returned to x plus 1, because SymPy in Python is understanding this as an expression. If I use symbols y without uh, setting, it to, setting it to any variable. We're going to see the return here. It returns y as a symbol. Now, I haven't set this as a variable, so we're not going to use that at all, but we still got x. x is still working for us as a symbol within Python and because of SymPy's symbols function. That's the way that we can use this as a real symbolic mathematical value. Note that this symbols function, what it's going to do is it's going to take a string of variable names and they're typically separated by uh, commas or spaces. We could even pass x and y and z and it'll note that okay all of these variables x, y, and z are going to equal these. Now we've got x, we've got y, and we've got z. That works pretty well for us. Now let's do some investigating. What if we had these in uh, a different kind of order? We had uh, let's say a and b. a and b are different, are different variables we can use. But if they were in the order of B, comma, A, keep in mind symbols can read it with commas or spaces, B and A. Now A is equal to B as a symbol, and B is equal to A as a symbol. This is a little bit confusing, right? Well, the A variable in Python is pointing to the symbol B in SymPy. So typically when you're talking about this stuff, when you're talking about the code and your mathematics and your work with SymPy and Python, what we'll be saying is that Python variables refer to obviously Python variables. We're going to say variable if I mean to say variable. If I mean to say symbol, a SymPy symbol, how we're interpreting it in the mathematics world, then we'll say symbol, right? So I know this is a variable in mathematics as well, but it's also confusing because it's a Python variable in computer science. So when I'm referring to a variable in mathematics, I will say symbol. <laughs> I know that's probably a little hard to kind of follow me, but the real point behind this is that a Python variable will be stated as a variable, and a SymPy symbol will be stated as a symbol. Hopefully that's not too confusing. I know it gets messy, so let's, <laughs> let's check it out. Messy? <laughs> can equal symbols everything. I wanted to show this to you guys because now messy being a variable is a symbol everything. I want to show this to you because it can also display that symbols can have names that are longer than one character if you want to have them that way. Typically, the best practice is to assign symbols to Python variables that have the same name, 
but this can kind of be led to a few exceptions. Symbol names cannot contain characters that are allowed, uh, can contain characters that are not allowed in Python variables, like starting with an integer or minus signs. I, I think you can use minus signs. I'm not, I'm not typically certain. Um, but, hey, you can play around with it and do what you'd like to do. Now, note we can have expressions that keep track of all of these variables, x and y and z. Uh, z here, sorry. X is what we can work with. We can say x plus 1, the same example we've been working with before. And we can have this expression variable equal x plus 1. Now we've got our expression, x plus 1. That's fantastic, right? Now, what if we changed the Python variable of x to equal something else? Rather than a symbol that we set in Python, uh, what if we, a symbol that we set in SymPy, sorry. What if we change it what if we change the value of x to 2? 2 plus 1 is 3, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now if we run expression, if we, if we look at our expression, what do we see here? It's still x plus 1, but we just set x to equal 2. What the heck? Well, keep in mind, x equals 2 is set as the Python variable. And of course, we haven't even changed the expression variable. That's still going to equal x plus 1, while x is a Python, a, simple, a SymPy symbol, it's not a Python variable anymore. What if, of course, if we, if we try and reset expression right up here, now if we look at expression, we get 3. Now this is only happening because of order and because of procedural programming. Changing x to 2 had no effect on the expression, because we've only changed the variable, but we haven't changed the expression before, uh, afterwards, you know? This behavior is not unique to SymPy. It, it happens all the time in programming. If a variable is changed, expressions that were changed with that variable do not automatically change. Let's take a look at this. The tutorial and the documentation online gives this, 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 gives this good example, saying x equals abc, and the expression can equal uh, x plus df, you know? And if we were to look at the expression, expr, and if we change x to equal abc, and then if we look at the expression one more time, it's still abcdf, because we only changed x, we didn't change the expression. And this just has another layer of uh, higher order brain thinking, because now we're looking at Python SymPy symbols on top of Python variables. So that can get a little jumbled in your head, but it shouldn't have to. Just know that anything that you set as a symbol is going to work as a symbol. And, uh, symbols, sorry. There you go. Okay. Um, I think that's kind of all that I want to talk about in this video, just really simply introducing X symbols to you. And they're treated as variables. You can do as many things as you kind of want with them. It's simply variables that work in mathematics as well in the computer science and programming realm. So play around with it if you want. Um, we still got y and stuff like that. We can use x plus y, and they're still going to be working as the variables that they need to work as. y minus x, 30 times y minus x. You can just do math if you want. I mean, hey, dude, it's, <laughs> it's your world. It's your playground. Play in this playground. So... There you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, it was kind of a foundational thing, knowing how to create symbols in SymPy and how we're going to be able to use them in Python and the work that we do. So, all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll talk to you later.